You're listening to Inside Real Estate, your source for all things mortgage and real estate related. The show that brings you all the hottest topics and insight directly from those who know it most. Now sit back and enjoy the show. There we go. Happy birthday, John Angel. Nice hat. Look at that guy. What's up, everyone? Paul Apostolakis. Salvatore Cusmano, Brad is not on the show because this platform only allows four people, and we've got two brothers on, me and Sal, and our group just got better looking because Brad's not here. How's everybody doing? Doing well, doing well. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. So we have some old friends of the show on the show. Uh, we've got the Angel Brothers on here from Angel & Company. Uh, they are uh, some of the best CPAs in our area, area and probably across the country. You guys, you guys, really good job not only for your clients but uh for, for like uh for the real estate community in, in general more you guys do a lot of work with mortgage professionals you guys do a lot of work with real estate professionals so we're always always very very happy to have you on so thank you guys for coming on the show today of course yeah. thank you and as you said you know it's uh my brother john's birthday so a little birthday podcast That's yeah it's a like birthday it. podcast john how old are you bud 32. wow 32 wow baby yeah, boy man. uh he re uh, john recently had a had a baby girl how's the girl dude she's awesome man 15 months dad 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 wow. dad waiting around getting into stuff it's it's fun that's awesome bro that really is awesome so i wanted to bring you guys on because obviously the line's coming up i have to bring i gotta send you my shit so i'm like way behind but uh do. yeah of course <laughs> i do of course i do you think i have a control that would do it for me but i don't so uh, uh so i wanted to bring you guys on because obviously you got your insight in the, in the whole uh, in the whole tax world is, is very uh valuable to our audience so I, I wanted to talk to you guys today about like what you're seeing with the deadline coming up uh what you're seeing potential changes due to a lot of the things that have been going on with the stimulus i wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about you know, you guys helped us with uh, some things with, uh, you know, during the whole COVID thing, there, there were some programs available to small businesses and kind of what, what you guys are seeing as far as that, because those rules changed by the minute, by the day. It's like, it's like, it's very hard to kind of keep up with a lot of that. And John, I, Joe, I know you did a lot of good work with that. Oh yeah, no. So uh, and, uh, yeah, no, you got the CARES Act, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act. Brand new act, a bunch of changes. The big thing, first off, two weeks from today, the new tax deadline, July 15th, uh, 2019 taxes, taxes due, both federal and state, and then first and second quarterlies, 2020. Uh, this is new for everyone, you know? So like for us, we didn't know how this was gonna be. It's summertime, are people just gonna extend it and wait? That's not been the case. We're slammed. People that go timely, they want to file timely. Uh, so we're, we're jamming right now. Don't you think so, John, John? Yeah, it's, it's rocking and rolling. You know, it is the deadline. So people don't care that the CPAs are usually golfing in the summer. They still want their taxes done on time. So uh, <laughs> we're adjusting to it. We're adjusting to my daughter, You guys, guys. My daughter just walked in and I told her to leave and she's crying. She, look at this. Look at this. Oh, she was right away. Poor, poor girl. Close, close the door, home girl. <laughs> Bring her on, man. Man, I'm telling you, early on, you. so we were labeled essential, part of the banking industry, CPAs. We were able to come in and I tried the working from home thing early. I have three kids, as you guys probably know, nine, six, and four. It wasn't working. As soon as I, the no. whole day would be cool. And then it's like, okay, I got a conference call at nine. I'd tell everybody no matter what, boom, when nine o'clock came, it erupted. It never failed. I couldn't do it. So I don't know how you're still doing it, Paul. I'm not doing it from home. I just do the podcast from home. Actually, actually I do this almost every day. This is the only day I don't because we do it now through this whole platform. So it's a little bit easier at home because I have the whole setup. But no, you're right, man. I, I could not work from home. I could not yeah. work from home. It was, it was uh, obviously I've got kids coming in my room and stuff yeah, so yeah. um but dude i think oh, your daughter's so, crying because you know after you file your taxes she's not going to be able to eat anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah uncle stay we'll be getting that government cheese boy that stuff is good actually <clears throat> when i was good so um so yeah so this deadline right so 
does it i mean so the taxes are due also the same so it's not like before where you could like file your taxes are there extensions that can be had thing it's all the same thing it's just july 15th instead of april 15th so you can still extend um and, and file your taxes by october 15th they just gave basically a few extra months for people to file their taxes timely and not have to deal with possible penalties or interest of paying late so that's, basically everything got shifted. That's the key with John. Just said, keep in mind, people need to know, oh, I'll just file an extension. I'm busy. I'm a realtor. I'm a mortgage professional. Rates are low. Homes are selling. Uh, I don't have time now. No, July 15th, whatever's owed for 19, that's still owed for 19. You don't get an extension on what's owed. You can extend on the filing, but if you owe something for 19, do July 15th or penalties and interest will start accruing the day after. And then, like I said, first and second quarterly estimates for 2020 all due July 15th. So that's a massive deadline. You know, it's really taking a lot of planning for us. Like I said, we didn't know, was it gonna be, and it's been crazy. And then like John John alluded to, you know, I'm trying to reel in my team. You know, it's summer, it's 90 degrees out. People are golfing, people are at lakes, people are doing this. Normally we're busy and it's winter and it sucks and it doesn't matter. It's been tough. I'm trying to reel in my team. We still have a couple CPAs that are out. Um, they're not comfortable with COVID-19. So we're at about 80%. Uh, it's been interesting, but I'm sure everybody's got, you know, similar stories with this, with this virus. Yeah. yeah, I mean this this thing this thing has changed a lot a lot of things obviously in our world. Um, now, as far as as far as when when this all this stuff hit and all these programs came out with the PPP and the EILs for business owners out there that, that were looking at that, there's so much confusion on what you could do, what you couldn't do, what was right, what was wrong, uh, how you were going to pay it back, how you weren't going to pay it back. It was crazy, um, man. It was it's crazy. crazy. God, yeah. like, I've never seen our CPA firm like that when all this stuff hit. It was, it was, I can't even get the words out how nuts it was in here because it was something new too. We were learning it. Even the government didn't even know how it works when they put it out, right? So when the people no, that put it out no. don't even know how it works, how are, how are we supposed to know how it works, right? And they're changing oh, rules. And Go. Yeah. They're changing rules. They're still changing rules. But on what you were saying, like the big two loans, the PPP, and the yeah. EIDL, some of the new rules on the PPP, everything that they're doing, they're making that loan easier and easier to get forgiven. They want it yeah. forgiven. So a couple like yeah. general high level points on it. Originally, they said, hey, you had to spend 75% of the PPP proceeds on payroll. That number is now 60%. And where they said you had an eight week period, to, to spend the money, it's now right. four weeks. So they're doing everything in their power to make it easier and easier. There's also been talks like, okay, we went through, we helped you on the application, we got your loan submitted, boom, you got the money, it was a process. If things aren't getting back to normal here, they have in their back pocket another stimulus act that they could throw in. They're talking about a second round of PPP funds. And on that round, it would just be, okay, Omega, you got X amount of dollars. Here it is again. Go ahead and keep working through this. So. Oh, no way. So so basically, you don't have to reapply? It's just if you did the first time and you got it? That's what they're saying. It's all talk right now and proposals. You have to see how this thing shakes out. You know, two weeks ago, it looked like, hey, you know, COVID-19, the coronavirus, we're through this. Uh, numbers are down. And then now, as you can see, different states, there's there's spikes, there's new closings. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, for, yeah, we show learning numbers everywhere. Anarchy. They just extended it. I just, uh, from, it was supposed to be PPPs were done June 30th. They actually extended it to August 8th now. You can still apply for it. And there's still, that's a great get, point, John. There's yeah. still PPP money out there. Any of the listeners, yeah. any independent contractor, realtors, if you got a 1099, you're eligible for that PPP and there's money out there and we can help you with that. Have you guys ever experienced a situation where uh, programs come out and they're so not formed? There's they're like, think about how long it's been since the PPP came out and they said they were going to do this and the EIDL. 
And, you know, the, like a lot of people are flying blind. They're like, okay, I need the money. I'm going to take the money. But the, the, the rules, there was a moving target. It was like, it was like, how are we going to, you know, like, have you ever seen something where the rules just keep changing, like on the fly like this? It's very interesting. It, it reminds me the last time, and I've, I've been doing this for about 20 years, a little longer than John John, but it reminds me a little of the housing crisis, for example, with that first time home buyer credit. Do you remember how that yeah. changed? Yeah, 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 yeah. Times in the first one you had to pay back, the second one over a year, two years, the third one, it's free money. That's the only example that I can think of in the 20 years I've been doing that. And again, that was a crisis. I work that with loan modifications and cancellation of debt and foreclosures, this, this crisis too. And that's something I actually wanted to ask you guys about, you know, as this thing's evolving, I mean, now, you know, you have that, that little surge in real estate, that pent up demand, right? And you have rates low. So you guys are super busy. 12 months, 18 months from now with job numbers, how they are, depending on the rebound, what do you guys see in the forecast as far as real estate goes and as far as rates go? I'm curious. Um, I, 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 Sal, you can start out and I'll, and I'll piggyback off you. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think that real estate is going to stay uh, relatively hot just because of the lack of, of supply and the demand, right? I mean, the demand is greater than the supply. And as long as that exists, right, uh, people will be wanting to buy and buy quickly. You know, there'll be multiple offer situations. Uh, housing prices should stay steady. But, you know, on top of that, too, a lot of people are staying put and refining and getting into record low rates. So, I mean, as far as the mortgage business goes, I don't foresee any huge uh, issue short of, you know, potential liquidity uh, problems coming again in the future. Like if there's another shutdown or if money has to keep being injected in the economy to keep it afloat. I mean, <clears throat> how much adrenaline can you put into someone's heart before they die you know like that's a great analogy bro. that is a great analogy um yeah i think it's you know, sell you, you nailed it like demand's not slowing down boys you know we got a whole population of millennials that are really entering the market um and i think i think demand is actually being uh increased because dude we, i talk about this all the time and i've said it a few times people are actually living in their homes for the first time ever so they're either very happy with where they live and they're investing in their home and fixing up their yards and painting and all this stuff, right? That's why you're seeing Home Depot blow up. Or they're living in a box or a condo, no windows with two kids. And they're like, shit, I, I got to get out of here, right? So you've got a big population of people. I think the, the value, the, the, the human value on homes has gone up in their mind now that they were having to be locked into their home, right? So the value of that home from a personal safety standard, from, a, from an innate like animalistic kind of standard, they want to have their land. They want to have their buildings. They want to have, you know, they want to have their home. If, if anything like this ever happens again, it kind of exposed some of maybe the rental rent, renter mentality or potentially people that were like, I, I never live in my house. Who cares about what my house is like? I'll live in a small apartment. I just go back and work to every day. Right. Well, that changed when you got to live in your house. That's part of it. I think are going to stay low. I don't think they can move up from where they're at. I don't think our economy is able to, to withstand that right now. Uh, because I think, you know, inflation might be a problem at some point because of all the money that we printed. Like you said, Sal, I mean, how much adrenaline can we pump into the system? I mean, are you guys seeing some weird things from a COVID standpoint, ink standpoint? Are you guys seeing businesses? What kind of businesses are you guys seeing struggling? That's that's what I'm like, because you guys probably have a more acute attention to that. Yeah, the, the restaurants, obviously, so far have really, yeah. the restaurant margins in general, Restaurants have to be operated almost flawlessly and the owner has yeah. to be active or the manager has to be active or people will steal food. People will steal money. The pores get a little, I know sales. It's, like a, it's a cash poor, business too. But you know, the pores get a little heavy. Uh, so restaurants are ready and then you shut them down and force them to, you know, carry outs. And then even now, you know, they're back open. People are hesitant. People generally, I'm I'm okay with it. Me and John John, we had a business launch at Capital Grill last week, Wednesday. Uh, clients normally, Capital Grill is about what 12, 15, 12, 30, John. Yeah. Damn, people at the bar, Packed. people outside. I think there was three or four tables. It was yeah. it was almost wow. weird in there. 
So, you know, even though they're back open and they're not shut down, I think more people are hesitant to go and do that kind of stuff. So the restaurants, my gyms, my gyms still aren't open. Gyms too, their margins, unless you own all that equipment and own the real estate, you're making lease right. payments on all that equipment and you're paying your rent. Gym margins, right. yeah, you know, so, and then, you know, just across the board, like it really depends on someone's age. You know, my 60, 61 year old guy, builder, home improvement guy, he's been grinding his whole life. He's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not going through this again. I'm okay. I'm going to shut down. So, you know, uh, stuff like that. That's yeah. interesting. Case by case. That is it. That really is. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. We have other restaurants too where I've talked to them and they, you know, when they're set up for takeout, um, it's been better for them. You know, pizza places, that, Chicken Jack, um, they, they, they've almost yeah. been thriving. They've cut their costs and they're just pumping out, you know, carry out orders. So it all depends. You know, you, you kind of make it of the situation, but some people, some restaurants that aren't set up for, for that, you know, it's, it's weird. You know, it's funny that you say that because. No, go ahead, I'm sorry to cut you off. I, what I was going to say is I, cause I see, I see businesses that are adapting and, and that like, that are actually like kind of using this as a way to like propel themselves forward. But I mean, I don't, I, if you don't adapt in this market right now, I think you're going to be in trouble. What do you think about commercial real estate? How, how fucked is that? I commercial real estate's the first, the first one that's going to fall. We were just talking about that yesterday. Uh, I, that, that's going to be very interesting. They were already, capped out you know in a, in a funny yeah. position and you take all these people and you're removing them out of the offices and then all these owners are like well guess what i don't need all this space i mean just do the math on that commercial real estate is going to be in trouble that's odd too is you know people are shut down they're not paying their rent if you just own buildings you couldn't go get a ppp if Great. you don't have payroll you know and it's not earned income so it's almost like they made it where you could defer rent, but then they didn't really do anything for the people that actually own properties if they don't have if they don't have payroll. So it's kind of odd how that was done. Think of that: the the landlord, the guy who owns thirty rentals, or the landlord, the commercial guy, landlord real estate activity ineligible for PPP. I don't. I mean, why? That's wild. Yeah. That's wild. That's yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that if you were affected in any way, you could uh, you could apply for, for the PPP. I guess it's not, that wasn't the case. Avoid income when it's uh, when it's rentals. It's really odd, man. Yeah, got it. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's interesting because I mean, Sal, you and I were looking at a space and we were getting like uh, it was like in in Royal Oak and like we were told like here's the price they want us to do a personal guarantee and it was still market price and I really looked at it and, I, and Sal, we all looked at it and we're like, look, right now is not the right time, but realistically, dude. Six months from now, if we really need space, I believe there's gonna be a lot of space available for cheap. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't see like a mass, especially now the world is changing. Uh, everything's remote, like you said. Why do you need like thirty thousand square feet to have all your people in? Right? Um, it's it's yeah. going to be interesting. How long do you guys think this is going to last? You know, like I said two weeks ago, I would have said, oh, finally, we're through this." Uh, every the numbers are looking good, this and that, and then now you're seeing these states, and it was those early states, right? It was the Texas, the Floridas, the Arizonas, Arizona. the Georgias that came out of the yeah. gate early and opened up, and now they're shutting things back Whoa. down and closing stuff again. You know, we have a lot of clients too, and the majority of them say this: viruses run in cycles. Okay, all viruses run in cycles. So now Michigan's low. Well, guess what? Yeah, they're gonna cycle back up, and when we cycle back up, Florida will come back down. You know, so that's just typically how viruses move. Uh, another interesting thing that some doctor clients have told me, you know, they think uh, the cases overall. You know, if there's two million cases, there's probably been ten million. And yeah, then yeah, on yeah, the yeah. Side with the deaths. You know, because a lot of these private hospitals, if you label COVID-19 as a cause of death, they get more money you from the charges, right? So they- Do you believe that that happened? Do you believe that was happening where people were labeling it as a COVID to get the it happened, money? It happened, it's happening now. It's happening today. From Dr. Clark. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. how much they get? Like, I'm just curious. How much are they getting for COVID? I don't get that. How much four, are they getting for COVID Four cases? times roughly what they would get for a normal death. They're getting four times the payment for COVID-19. So overall, the consensus with the doctors are cases are overstated, right? Cases are understated here. 
and then deaths are super, super low and probably overstated, this thing's probably a lot less deadly, a lot less deadly than we thought. Uh, but you know, it, it's it's all what the, the perception is reality, Joe. What I mean, perception is reality. It doesn't matter what the facts are. You know what I mean? Sometimes it, it it is just what the human herd thinks about. Sal, I mean, from from a real estate standpoint, Sal, are you seeing people? I know we did at the beginning, like, hey, I you know I lost my job, and we were really worried about that. Are you seeing a lot of people that are like that you talk to that are worried about their employment, or are are you seeing most of those? People like oh yeah hey we're good like we, we figured it out the industry you know i mean uh like i have a client who i just wrote a refinance for put together right and when he went to go sign his docs he's like dude like 95 percent sure i'm getting laid off tomorrow I'm like damn you know but he's a recruiter <laughs> so it's you know a lot of their clients essentially don't need the demand for for all these new people or or maybe you know they're they're just hiring cheap labor remotely you know, yeah, like, yeah. industry specific. And like back to your original point, you know, where some people are flourishing and adapting, some people are stubborn or some people just, it's not a good fit with COVID, how it affected them, you know? So a yeah. um, couple other things on the CARES Act, just kind of switching gears away from COVID. Yeah. Uh, you have unemployment out there, right? So right. unemployment, you have the max based on wages and earned income at 362 from the state, another 600 a week supplemented from the feds. That's called the PUA federal supplement. So a max of 962 per week. You do the math on that, it's almost $51,000 a year. So a lot of my clients are having problems bringing their people back. Some of their people yeah. do not. Yeah doing nothing are making more money on unemployment. Good thing that that 600 a week is set to end July 31st. So whether they extend that or not, I'm hoping, I know people need this. Truthfully, I'd like to see them not extend that. That will force some of these people back and will kind of stimulate jobs again. That's where I'm at with that. That's interesting that you say that. There are a lot of people in, I mean, that, that are making more, by not working and it, it I, there's a lot of unintended because do you guys believe that the the stimulus was 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 proper that, that was handled correctly or do you guys believe that like maybe more should have been done i mean how much can you really do though right i mean it's you know the stimulus checks were cool they, there were income limits on it a lot of people that really still need it didn't get it because of the income limits right i do think the yeah. ppp was a pretty good thing because it can yeah. jumpstart you too, because a lot of people still have cash in their bank account or still slightly have revenue coming in when they receive the PPP. So basically for two months, if you have revenue coming in, you basically have payroll and rent for free. And that two months of revenue can jumpstart you into something else. You can find better bodies to fill in. You can go buy something new, things like that. So if people are smart right. and did it right, it can help. Also, this stuff's not easy, right? Business isn't supposed to be easy. You know, you're not supposed to just sit there and get stuff. <laughs> That's a great point. You know what I'm saying? So you got to plan it out and do it right. And it's not always, you know, easy to get it done. Um, you know, the EIDL, it's nice. You can stretch, you know, it's a nice injection. It's a loan though still, so it still is debt. People are still going to be paying interest, but it's over, you know, 30 years. So um, you can use that to clean up some stuff and, and stretch out some debt over time. But, you know, in the end, you know, nothing's going to fix all this stuff. No. Mm -hmm. No. Both those products are still out there. EIDL loan and PPP funds still out there. You can still apply, still get that money. PPP can get forgiven. EIDL, as John said, is a loan. 30 years at 3.75. It's like $690 a month. Pretty cheap payment. Another thing on that EIDL, first 12 months, interest-free. You mm -hmm. don't have to use the money. There's no prepayment penalty. You can get that money, hold on to it for the next 12 months, see what's going on, and then just give it back to them in 12 months from now. No harm, no foul. Stick it into an interest-bearing account at 1.5%, like a Marcus account from Goldman Sachs. Boom, you just made X amount of dollars, and you had some money on the sidelines. So, you know, an interesting strategy for the small businesses out there. Realtors are eligible for that, mortgage people, so keep that in mind. Yeah, you know what's funny about a lot of that stuff is like I talked to a lot of people and they were like, um, 
you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And I'm not taking the money or I'm not doing the PPP or I don't need this. And it's um, like, uh, what's that? I don't understand that. I don't get it. Honestly. Especially on the PPP, as we know more and more how easy it is to get that forgiven. That was a right. bridge loan from the government. You know, and again, your original point, Paul, how do you think the CARES Act and the stimulus, how do you think that they did? Truthfully, I mean, think of what they were faced with on the spot. This country was in disarray, shutdowns, COVID-19 cases. Poor president looked like he hadn't slept for three weeks. He's got a team together. Overall, I mean, everyone's always going to go complain and, and point fingers. Yeah, they yeah. were dealt a very difficult hand and did what they I don't think they had a choice. I don't think they had a choice. They had, but the the the, the funny so, thing is, this it, it, this makes two thousand eight look like it was nothing. You know what I mean? It makes it makes it look like it was a speed bump. It was, it was medical, right? It's health. It's a you know all of that stuff's bad, but it's a real tough line because economic and you know a health issue. So like yeah, you know yeah, both yeah. sides the tightrope, and you really there's no right way to do any of it. You know what I'm saying? So basically, when there's yeah, no right yeah, way, it will always be scrutinized to some degree. Yeah, right. like so, so people are someone's gonna with anything. People like to complain and nitpick it. That's just how people are. And there um, will be people that will take advantage of it, like just like the the doctors with with COVID, right? Like, yeah. Oh, COVID death, right? Same thing. Like you, you got to I mean, know. Yeah, you got to be okay. People with are it. getting unemployment and stimulus checks, who I know have millions of dollars. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Another, but little, but little, to, little, to your point, I think. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. I was gonna say, if in my opinion, if it wasn't for the stimulus and done the way that it was done as quickly as it was done, we were we were in, a, we were in really bad shape, guys. Like the, the the markets dried up, liquidity dried up overnight, uncertainty took hold, markets crashed. Now you look at the stock market; it rebounded. It might be overinflated. We could talk about yeah, that, what, but the, you know that's the stock there. Stock market, what the fuck? I, 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 it's crazy, dude. It's, it's crazy. It doesn't match. Yeah, you know, at. Uh, your your market with real estate's a lot easier to read than what's going on with the stock market right now. Um, you know, some people the term that financial analysts use they call it a dead cat bounce. When a cat yeah. is dead, yeah, you yeah, yeah, throw the cat off a building, yeah. and yeah. hits the ground, it's so dead, and then bounces right. And that's right. why he, I guess, he does yeah, listen, I, bro. He I, does I, listen, <laughs> bro. That's not that what happens. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Wow. but yeah. but that's the thing. Like, is this is this just speculation? Like, people are like, like, oh, you know, the cases went down. But let's say there's another shutdown, or that we got, you know, clue. I have as much of a clue as my my 15 month old daughter. Yeah, clue about. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, the stock yeah. market is, is. I have not. not it's no. not tangible. No, it's, no, but it's no, not it, a tangible thing, right? I mean, of course, it's backed by the the companies, right? But like. Everyone speculation, is speculation, bro. It's all speculation. It's media. It's news. It's yeah, and and that's a lot of the ups and downs. But don't forget the bulk of what holds it. It it comes down to liquidity, and it comes down to transactions. Mm -hmm. and cash flows in and cash flows out. And if you look at these companies' balance sheets, even your balance sheet, even our balance sheet, people learn to some extent from the 08, 09, and housing crisis. People were a little more flush. Companies had more money in savings accounts. So if the liquidity of things, when the Dow did drop down back to 17, 18,000 there to fight back up, it's because people had money on the sidelines, because companies had money on the sidelines. But you know, I also think consumers had money on the sidelines waiting for it too. Yeah. yeah. How did that go? I mean, my big thing is jobs. All the economic indicators out there, people, if Las Vegas is operating at 50% capacity, you got the Venetian Palazzo, which I know is one of Sal's favorite places on the planet. Loves it. Done there. Loves it. But the Palazzo side's closed. They're only opening oh, it half is? the hotel. Half the hotel's closed, jobs, restaurants. That's one example in one city. How does that look across the board long term? I think it's going to be a shuffle. Right? How many people are going to be working for Amazon? How many hundred thousand yes. dollars delivery drivers are yes. there to be now? There's yes. probably going to be a lot yes. of hundred hundred and fifty thousand dollar a year delivery drivers in the next yes. twelve to eighteen months. 
So it's a shuffle. That's what I see, a shuffle. I, but I agree. Yeah. We, are, we, we are seeing industries being created and destroyed very quickly. So if your industry, if I'm like in, in the restaurant industry or I'm a sir or I'm a bartender, I'm looking at different industries because that industry is not going to do great. You know what I mean? If I'm, if whatever industry was really affected by this, I'd be looking somewhere else right now because uh, other industries are going to pop up. There's opportunity now. Time to evolve, time to embrace the change. You can't fight this. Yeah. You got to embrace the change, go with it and make moves from that point. So yeah, real quick yeah. on the stimulus too. I know you guys don't want to talk accounting nerdy stuff, but you do got a couple <laughs> of things on here. Uh, if you didn't get yeah. the stimulus check, there's some people that still reach out. Hey, I didn't get it. I hadn't had 18 and 19 filed. You know, we can step and file those tax returns, get you that money. But for some reason, if you didn't get it, they're going to reconcile that on your 2020 tax return. OK, so if you didn't get your money, then there's going to be a spot and it'll be included increasing your refund when you file in 2020. So don't panic. And then, John, you were telling me on some of the new stimulus money. What do you what do you see on that? Do you see another round of stimulus coming? I mean, they're talking about it again. It's all speculation, but I wouldn't be shocked to see something else come out. You know, they're just uh, I think they have to do something. I think they have to make it easier for more people to get it. I think those income limits of uh, 75 to 100 for single and 150 to 200 for married was just cutting out too many people. Because if you think of just like outside of Michigan, right, like a, a, a young person in New York, California, or, yeah, California, uh, everything's so much higher. And, you know, you have people that are barely making it out there that didn't receive the stimulus, you know. So um, and again, I don't know if that's just Trump shot on those cities, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, I think something else has to come out. Do we do we see some issues once the once the uh, the the unemployment from the government come the stops going out and i know you said it might be a good thing because people go back to work but what if those people don't have another job to go back to and there's no stimulus and they're not getting the 600 bucks and they're only getting 300 bucks from the state and now they're, they're behind their bills do you guys see the uh the the, the uh, going away causing even more issues from from a affordability standpoint you know what i mean from a yeah, spending no. standpoint that's my whole thing back on jobs and i when i say jobs I mean the liquidity of the everyday person, whether it's right. supplemented from unemployment, supplemented from stimulus, or supplemented from their employer. How does that jobs, how do their earnings look? You need people going to restaurants, going to stores, ordering stuff, hiring accounts, consumers. refinancing, paying closing costs. That's what makes this thing go work. So that jobs, that's the biggest thing that I'm fearful of. How the, how does that all look here in the next twelve to eighteen months during that yeah, shuffle? I, during that yeah, I shuffle, don't, I don't think a lot of people truly like. Sometimes, like the general public doesn't totally understand this. <clears throat> Our economy is built on consumption. If we're not borrowing, spending, and eat, and like doing all this stuff, our system stops it ceases to exist we are built on consumption and it being able to leverage debt to buy things and i mean that's our whole, whole system you stop the consumption you got really big problems right you, people stop consuming televisions and 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 how stuff suffer their house and and all this stuff and food it really is going to cause some issue i'm really a little fearful to be honest guys to see what happens when all the stimulus kind of like all the dust settles and nobody's getting any more cash from the government, then what are they, doing, right? Are they, are they now for our foreclosures going to go up because they can't afford their home all of a sudden, right? Yeah. Our, our defaults on, on credit cards. Like we haven't seen the foreclosures go up too high because we've had uh, forbearance and forbearances at like eight or nine or 10%, which they thought could be way worse, but it hasn't been. A lot of them are already still making their payments. So it's actually around 6%. Um, but we haven't seen the foreclosures that we potentially could be seeing coming forward. Sal, do you think we're going to see foreclosures through this, or do you think we're going to? It's going to shake itself out. Um, I think, if if anything, I mean, I think that we're going to be the the government's going to make sure everything is fine throughout all of this, right? Print more money, do whatever they have to do. I don't see necessarily uh, foreclosures being a big thing, but I do. My worry or, or my thoughts are like okay, when all this is over, right, let's say it's another a year, two years, right, <clears throat> that it all goes on, what does it look like on the other side as far as, you know, national debt and, and things of that sort? What implications does that have on the world economy, if any, right? Does it, 
create a war? Is it something of that sort? I, I, who knows? I mean, I got this it's wild. thing up on my. What What's the value of the dollar look like? You know, yeah, right. the dollar yeah. go where you know it was worth fifty cents. You know, compared to a lot of these other countries, right now we're kind of back uh, even. We're you know depending on which country. Well, what is the well, dollar? Well, if you look at the euro, the euro the, compared to the euro, it's getting it's gotten stronger. It's yeah. gotten much stronger, right? Right. Um, well, this is a global yeah. crisis too, right? Yeah. Um, and and the U.S. dollar is the most traded currency in the world, right? I believe. I mean, well, it, it it is. I don't have it in front of me, but it's, it's the premier. Yeah, it's yeah. the premier currency of the world, right? Everything to a degree runs off the dollar, but that doesn't mean that it can't be devalued to some degree in the future. Once that, all this is, yeah, like you're saying, the government will continue to try to make things right with stimulus and stuff like that. Uh, but what does that do to the dollar when other countries, even though this is a global pandemic, they're not doing as much as our country is doing as far as creating new debt? Well, because they don't even need, they don't need to support as many people as we do, right? You know, right. And it's, it's another thing too. Like even before this happened, you know, you had people living outside their means and not saving money and things like that. And then this hit. You know, I know if you make a lot of money you should be saving some money for for cases like this when this happens i don't really have sippy i understand some people live paycheck to paycheck depending on their job or their situation or family i get that but you know if you're making a lot a pretty good amount of money and you don't have anything saved for something like this to happen i just don't really have sympathy for you because that means you're just guaranteed you expect just the spigot that hey my job's always in place and money's always in place and nothing will happen yeah, but John, John, to be fair, like like my dad owned restaurants, right? And you know what I always say when I opened the mortgage company? I'm like, fuck, man. If I would have just opened a, a, a restaurant and had a good burger, people will always eat and I will always be able to sell that burger, right? Sure. That is an industry that you always thought people will always eat. People will right. always eat. And if I have good food, they will show up. So it's almost like those people got, they felt like they had a proof industry a lot of times, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you know, for us, <laughs> In my mortgage market, I don't feel like I have a foolproof industry at all. No, and I, and my rule of thumb, no matter what industry, businesses or personal, three times your monthly expenses should be what you hold in an emergency fund. So your personal household with all your expenses, mortgages, cars, et cetera, et cetera, three times that monthly number should be held for a time like this. Same thing with the business. When you operate your business, some people like to pull it all the way down to zero, fight back up, do it close. I like to think, and I recommend to my clients, three times whatever your monthly fee is, hold that in an account, and that's your zero, right? If it's 75,000, 75,000 is your zero, and then operate from that point. You know, you never know when that rainy day comes, and I know what you're saying, Paul. You know, people are, oh yeah, you know, everyone's gonna eat, everyone's gonna do that, but it's just, this, if, if, if it was never apparent before, it sure is now that things can change like that. So I think you brought up something poignant, though. I think you brought up 2008, and I think a lot of people learn their lessons. I actually am seeing millennials who have lived now through like two two pretty major crises, right? Like uh, they're like going through that. They've been some of the most fiscally sound people I've seen. Uh, these millennials are saving their money. They're not making a ton, but they're, they're really saving their money. They're taking the time. They understand the value of money, and it's interesting. I will. I want. I wanted to bring this up too. So um, we're, we're pumping all this money into the into the economy. So I read an interesting article. And I want to see what you guys think about it. So this guy, I forget what it was. I'll have to find the article. But his whole thing that he was saying is uh, he was making an argument to default on the Fed, meaning that the the debt the Fed that is buying that they're gonna wipe it clean. They're gonna they're gonna let it default default all that debt and just start over as a reset, right? And he said that would be a better option than rampant inflation because if you just said it you're just writing it off right because if you just printed it why can't you just write it off right so they're already buying junk bonds and giant buying these sh like like add a new whatever so would that be something that you guys think would make sense like if they just cleared the debt and just said okay we're starting over like why can't you do that because the fed owns us <laughs> but the fed <laughs> but the but the fe but the but because of the value the dollar there's so much money that was pumped into the system that isn't going to be paid back potentially they could just write it off we just start over why not just start over if you guys it's a whole deeper thing i mean that's 
we can't get into that. All right, all right. All right. Well, we'll have to, yeah, yeah, it is a little bit of a deeper thing. I just, yeah. I, I just thought it was interesting. Well, uh, next we talk, I'm going to put an article up because it was really, really interesting that, 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 that came up. I mean, because – I mean, it sounds a little out there, but it sounds also like something that's possible. It would, it would never, there was would some never thought behind the same thing. Right. It would never get through the bullshit of all the politics. Right. So whatever. Well, yeah, you, you could know. barely get this stimulus package through. They, yeah. were, they were adding in policies that made no sense sneaking that stuff in as this was getting passed. So, yeah. Can I just I mean, tell it'd be you interesting like to how see next year's important. budget. Yeah, and the budget going forward and how that's going to go, you know, play down and potential government shutdowns because of that, right? Well, that's just it too. I mean, the the domino effect on budgets. Like, let's look at schools, for example, and the budget set aside for schools, and it's based on number of students, right? I read something. Yeah, forty yeah. percent of parents are not going to be comfortable sending their kids to school in the fall. 40% of kids. So let's say it's not 40. Let's say it's 20. Let's say 20% of these kids that normally were in school and they counted their number and that's part of the budget that's taken away. And you throw in that you need more teachers to support social distancing because there's only X amount of kids allowed in class. How's that going to play out? I mean, there's that's no a great question, man. That is a good, so pretty my, interesting. My, 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 I mean, they could have like centralized schools right like your kid could go to school quote unquote from washington dc from some big hub that does online learning you know my kid i tell you right now and i'm not the only one my kids are not responding to the online learning they're not responding to the homeschool my son who i love john knows he's named after me giuseppe giovanni good kid listen to his teachers played sports this covid he's Rest. Animal. <laughs> His behavior's been awful. He's swearing. He's yelling. Him and the neighbor kids, they're killing frogs. I'm telling you, <laughs> I've never seen a yeah. bigger regression in my life. Yeah. 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 So they're going to face, yeah, they're going to have options. You know, I, like, dude, the there's so crazy. the ripple effect's crazy. What's that? Kids need this. Like they need to get back to school socially, structure. I mean, the, this whole thing is, is, flip so much stuff upside down that it's just like, you know, what, what can you do? You yeah. know, Sport. I wonder what the long-term impact of this extends for the children. Like I feel bad for my kids. I've, I've, I have to find ways to get a dates and find, have my friends with kids come over and make sure that, you know, like I, I worry about their social interaction and their, and that, that, that being kind of hurt. Cause like, if you grew up in your whole, I, I, like if I grew up in my house, with my parents, like think about the parents that are shitty parents that are abusive, that do drugs, that have issues, and these kids are only solace was getting away and going to school. They're no, screwed. No, no, it's deep no. Up the whole thing, man. It's 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 not no, good. Socially, it's no. really hard on those kids. My four year old daughter's asking me if coronavirus is over. She shouldn't be thinking about coronavirus. She's yeah, four I, know, years man. Old. I know, I know, I know. No, oh, ask me when the germs enough. will go away. Yeah, the number I, side of it with the budgets and the state budgets. And mm. state workers, and that goes again to my, you know, 12 to 18 months, like the ripple effect. What does this thing look like? I don't think, I don't think we've, we've seen it. The worth of COVID-19. Well, if, if we have no idea way what it's going to do. Right? I mean, we're going to have a country of idiots. I can't even, I mean, I can't it's learn it's online. Problem. It's crazy. No. How is that yeah, going to be, no, no, be different? It's, uh, another thing, I like bring you back to the nerdy accounting world. Uh, you know, just some things we're kind of planning out with our clients. We talked about the stock market being low right now. Uh, this is a good time if you ever heard of a Roth IRA conversion. So basically, you're converting other plans like a regular IRA or 401k, other qualified plans, you're converting it into a Roth. You convert it now. The idea is because the market is low or in six months here coming up to the election, let's say it pulls back, you convert it now, you pay less tax now because you convert it because the account's low, get it into the Roth, let it grow over time, over time, over time in the Roth. Then when you take those distributions from the Roth in retirement, there's no tax on Roth distributions. So you just saved a bunch of tax dollars. Some of the things that Got we're it. talking 
our people to, to kind of keep Got in it. mind, not, you know, you have to be tactical during times like this. If there's ever been a, a, a more apparent time to plan and really take a hard look at your numbers, it's right now. There's a lot of moving parts with this new tax code, with the CARES Act and things that you can do to kind of, you know, plan around it. Perfect. So usually, so guys, we're, we're nearing the end of the show. Guys, I appreciate you being on the show. I really do. It's John's birthday. So we're going to do something different today. We're going to do doing three questions. We're going to ask John what his three wishes would be. Wow. Wishes. That's tough. Oh, man. Man. Wow. Yeah. If you had three wishes, what would they be? Wow. wow. Three wishes. What would they be? My and one of them cannot be a Michigan national champion. <laughs> That's unrealistic. Uh, three wishes. Man, you put me on the spot. Uh, for all this bullshit to end and I can get back to my normal life and I can go to bars and waitresses aren't wearing masks and we can, I can, I don't feel bad hugging people and stuff like that. That's one wish. Uh, okay. Second wish, I think, uh, just my family and everyone stays healthy and uh you know i mean it's it's you know all of you guys you guys too just everyone just keeps prospering and staying healthy and then my third wish would be uh that jt barrett spot uh was, was correctly spotted in 2016 he was short and in michigan oh my god dude we're talking a lot of hey. what happens in the future going retro on john's point if yeah. barrett was short and that game's over and Harbaugh and Michigan go on to Indy, win a Big Ten title, go to the playoff in year two. Is Jim Harbaugh under this scrutiny? Probably not. But yeah. no, can tell we don't we no, don't no care way. about sports or Michigan. So yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, if anybody wants to catch it, John had an interesting call on the Valenny show uh, a little while ago. He it was a masterful like you and Valenny went at it. A segment about me. I had Mike rattled. He was short. I mean, he, I mean, he he even clipped it, and it was on, on because he doesn't always clip all the parts of his show, and he, because you really got under his skin, you fucked him up. Like he was not, he like, was not a very uncomfortable dude. Oh, he's good. I mean, he's he's a master at debating and stuff like Mark. that. Let me tell you, when you're driving in the car, you know, I don't got notes in front of me, you know, so it's not like I'm prepared for. So I mean, he he had me on the roast a little bit, but I fought back. John, he ha you handled yourself very well considering he's a master, but he hammered you. <laughs> yeah, he hammered, yeah, he hammered you. you. He kept talking about yeah. me after the after the thing. I basically had my own. Well, that's the that's the worst part about those shows. Like, imagine right now if I put you on mute and I just talk shit about you. You can't do anything about it. I <laughs> okay, we'll let you go, and then he chimes in with five minutes. You can't even yeah. cut him. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. guys. Guys, tell the audience how they can get a hold of you because you guys literally. I, I don't mean I don't oh, do this. But, like you guys are oh, are. Well, there it is. There, uh, you guys are one of the best CPAs that, that in the area. I know any, everybody that works with you always has a good uh, experience. You guys during the whole COVID thing, you guys actually reached out to us and told us what we needed to know instead of us trying to scramble. So we appreciate you at Omega. We, we I, I think everybody that works with you guys appreciate you. Appreciate yeah. you guys. So is this your? Is this the number for the, for you guys to get a for people to get a hold of you right here? That's our number two four eight six four nine eighty seven twenty. Thanks for the compliment. And, you know, full service accounting firm. I have 20 plus employees, CPAs, certified QuickBook pros, sales tax, payroll department. I have paralegals. We set up entities. We do elections. Your one stop business shop. Even if it's just, hey, I want to ask you a question. Any of Omega's listeners, uh, feel free, pick our brain. And uh, yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having us on the show, Paul and Sal. Yeah, and you guys are nationwide. You guys aren't just in Michigan. So the website for you guys is angelandcompany.com. Angel with two L's, right? Yep, angel with two L's, angelcompany.com. That's right. Oh, angelcompany.com. Got it. Uh, I love you, Angel Boys. You guys, are, you guys are some of the best humans I know. John, where's John? Did he leave? Is John gone? She caught me oh, there out. he is. John, John yeah. I want to wish you a very, very happy birthday. Okay. Every year that you're on this earth is one year that I'm happier. I appreciate it, man. I will, I will do my best and not tell, tell you how much I love you guys that I came on your podcast on my birthday. So we appreciate you yeah. guys and, uh, you know, just keep doing what you do. Paul and Sal. I love you guys. 12 o'clock cabin cruisers, downtown Rochester, little birthday lunch for John, John, you guys are welcome to stop by. Are you going yeah, to get any list that want to come down there? John will be signing autographs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, guys. All Thank right, you. guys, we are out to all the listeners. Please go to irepodcast.com or go to Stitcher, go to iTunes, go to Spotify, or go to forward slash irepodcast on Facebook. Review us, love us. If you hate us, uh, you can let us too. Love you guys. Thank you so much. We will see you guys next week. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.